All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. I want to give double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who I learned this truth from. And I'd like to say peace and salutations to the hopefully elect. And today I want to go into the book of 2nd Edris, chapter 2. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying and straight to the point. This is the book of 2nd Edris, chapter 2. Thus saith the Lord, I brought this people out of bondage, and I gave them my commandments by my by men servants, the prophets, whom they would hear not, but despise my counsels. And yes, the Lord did give us <coughs> his law, statutes, and commandments. He brought us out of the land of Egypt. But we despised his counsel. Verse 2, the mother that bare them saith unto them go your way ye children for i am a widow and forsaken i brought you up with gladness but with sorrow and heaviness have i lost you for ye have sinned before the lord your power and done that thing that is evil before him but what shall i now do unto you i am a widow and forsaken go your way all my children and ask the Lord for mercy and ask the Lord of mercy. As for me, O Father, I call upon thee for a witness over the mother of these children, which would not keep my covenant, that thou bring them to confusion and their mother to a spoil, that there may be no offspring of them. Yes, this mother that is talking about is the land of Israel because when we were in captivity, we became a nation in the land of Egypt. But once the Lord freed us from captivity, we went in 70 souls and left out 600,000. We became a nation within captivity and then we were given our own land. And Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Verse 7. Let them be scattered abroad among the heathen. Let their names be put out of the earth. For they have despised my covenant. And yes, we are scattered all over the earth. The Israelites were scattered all over in every nation amongst all these heathen nations. Mainly here in America. But we are scattered. Verse 8. Woe be unto thee, Asher, thou that hidest the unrighteous in thee, O thou wicked people. Remember what I did unto Sodom and Gomorrah, whose land lieth in clods of pitch and heaps of ashes. Even so also will I do unto them that hear me not, saith the Almighty Lord. And yes, that's what the Lord is going to do to America. The same thing he did to Sodom and Gomorrah, he destroyed it with fire and brimstone. It's going to destroy America in that same fashion by way of the ICBM missiles during World War III. Verse 10, Thus saith the Lord unto Esdras, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. Their glory also will I take unto me and give them and give these the everlasting tabernacles which I have prepared for them. They shall have the tree of life for an ornament of sweet savor. They shall neither labor nor be weary. And yes, once we get in the kingdom and we get our new bodies, we're no longer going to labor. We're no longer going to work. We're no longer going to be tired. We're no longer going to be weak. We're not going to have to worry about the things that we worry about right now. Verse 13. Go and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. And that's what we're doing. 
you know, all the sincere men, starting with the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, that's what we're doing. We're watching. We're waiting for the kingdom. We're waiting for the return of our Lord, Yahweh Shah, so we can come and establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. Verse 14, take heaven and earth to witness, for I have broken the evil in pieces and created the good, for I live, saith the Lord. Mother, embrace thy children and bring them up with gladness. Make their feet as fast as a pillar, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. And those that be dead, I will, write, I will raise up again from their places. For I have known my name, for I have known my name in Israel. Fear not, thou mother of the children, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. And yes, out of all of the lands that are on the earth, he chose the land of Israel to be a holy place, to be set apart from the rest. Verse 18, for thy help will I send my servants Esau and Jeremy after whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee twelve trees laden with diverse fruit. Slack you. After whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee twelve trees laden with diverse fruits and as many fountains flowing with milk and honey and seven mighty mountains whereupon there grow roses and lilies whereby I will fill thy children with joy do right unto the widow do right to the widow judge for the fatherless defend the orphan clothe the naked heal the broken and the weak laugh not a lame man to scorn defend the maim let not and let the blind man come into the sight of my clearness and keep the old and young within thy walls and yes this is basically going into you know the elect you know because ultimately on a carnal level on a carnal level or a physical level you know some women of the nation of Israel have been widows as a nation yes we are weak because we don't have power No, we shouldn't laugh a lame man to scorn, meaning, you know, someone that asks a question and it may seem a little crazy, we shouldn't, you know, laugh at him. Or rather, you know, give him an answer. And let a, a blind man, or let a blind man come into a clearness, basically. You know? Helping a blind man out. But spiritually, you know, these are the elect because this is what we are. Ultimately, the nation of Israel, you know, we are widowed, we're poor, we're orphans. Or we were orphans. We are broken, we're weak because we forsake the Lord. We didn't follow the Lord's law, statutes, and commandments, so he forsake us. But in this time that we're coming into, he's remembered us. He's remembered his elect. Verse 23. Wheresoever thou findest the dead, take them and bury them, and I will give them, and I will give thee the first place in my resurrection. Abide still, 
O my people, and take thy rest, for thy quietness still come. Nourish thy children, O thou good nurse, establish their feet. As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish, for I will require them from among thy number. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. And yes, in the time of Jacob's trouble, the Lord is going to protect his elect. You know, no trouble is going to come near them. And even if it does, the Lord is still going to deliver them out of it. So while everyone else is in torment, you know, the elect, they're going to have abundance. They're going to eat. They're going to drink during the famine. You know, no trouble is going to come near them because they're going to have that hedge of protection. Verse 28, the heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, saith the Lord, and they won't. They won't be able to do anything. Verse 29, my hand shall cover thee so that thy children shall not see hell, which is the lowest state. Be joyful, O thou mother, with thy children, for I will deliver thee, saith the Lord. Remember thy children that sleep, for I shall bring them out of the sides of the earth and show mercy unto them. For I am merciful, saith the Lord Almighty. And yes, the Lord is merciful. So those that have died in the faith, the Lord is going to show mercy unto them and bring them back. Verse 32, embrace thy children until I come and show mercy unto them. For my wills run over and my grace shall not fail. I, Edris, received a charge of the Lord upon the Mount Oreb that I should go unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they set me at naught and despised the commandment of the Lord. And yes, we did as a nation. We despised the word, the, the Lord's word. Hence the reason why we're in captivity now, where we're suffering from the curses. Verse 34. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, that hear and understand, look for your shepherd, and he shall give you everlasting rest, for he is nigh at hand, that shall come in the end of the world. And yes, this heathen that he is talking about is the nation of Israel, not the other nations. Because we were in a heathen state of mind, we were in a Gentile state of mind because we lost our way but it's telling us to look because the Lord is on his way he's going to come in the end when we're in the end verse 35 be ready to the reward of the kingdom for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore flee from flee the shadow of this world receive the joyfulness of your glory I testify my savior openly or receive the gift that is given you and be glad giving thanks unto him that hath led you to the heavenly kingdom and yes we should give thanks to the Lord that he saw us worthy to receive this truth and to be able to teach it verse 38 arise up and stand behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of the Lord take thy number O Zion and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white which have fulfilled the law of the Lord, the number of thy children 
whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord and thy people which have been called from the beginning may be hollow and that number is going into the 144,000, the elect, the 12,000 from each tribe. I, Edris, saw upon the mount a great people whom I could not number and they all praised the Lord with songs and in the midst of them there was a young man of a high stature taller than all the rest and upon every one of their heads he set crowns and was more exalted which I marveled at greatly so I asked the angel and said sir what are these he answered and said unto me these be they that put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of Yahweh. now are they crowned and received palms then said I unto the angel, what young person is that crown what Slakia, what young person is it that crowneth them and give them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, It is the son of Yahweh, whom they give whom they have confessed in the world. Then I began greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way, tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thy power thou hast seen. And yes, basically what the last few verses are going into is that reward that the elect will receive once they're delivered from the destruction and America is destroyed. That's going to be the reward. The Lord, Yahweh Shah, that young man that is speaking about our Lord, Yahweh Shah, he's going to set crowns upon the heads of the elect because they didn't bow the knee. They didn't receive the mark of the beast, the RFID chip. They stood stiffly for the name of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah. And this is what Edgers greatly marveled at because it was a great number of people there, innumerable multitude, the elect that was delivered and received their reward of salvation and their crowns. So Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, or Kakwadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and others of great millstone who I learned this truth from. And I'd like to say peace and salutations to the hopefully elect. Till the next time I say Shalom.